Hello, my name is Tasha Smutney. I am a double gold consultant as well as an IATAN card holder. We're going to talk about how you can direct directly book things for hotels, car rentals, and flights. Okay. So what if you can't find what you need on one of our vendors, right? There's going to be times that maybe a client's looking for a specific hotel and it's not popping up or the flights just don't work. Or why does that look like it's way more money than it should be for this car rental? We can book direct. We do not always have to go directly through the right through those vendors. We can book direct. So we're going to talk about how we book hotels, car rentals, and flights, not through all of our travel vendors directly. So let's talk hotels first. So if you're trying to book a hotel, or maybe it might not be that it's not available, but you're looking on that, that website and it really, you did compare apples to apples and it's a lot less money. And you know your client's going to see that, but you don't want to lose the booking for sure, right? Step one, you're calling the hotel. Typically, you can't do this online. There are some hotels that you can do it online. The easiest way is going to be to call the hotel and ask to book with the commissionable rate. Very important term right there. Okay, the very important term. Book with the commissionable rate. You're going to identify yourself and say, I'm a travel agent. I would like to get a quote so that I can book with the commissionable rate. Next. They're going to ask you for your IATA number. It's really Archer's IATA number. Everyone should know where to find that. It's going to be in the vendor information. We can find it in the quick start documents in the back office. It is also located on our team website, as well as on our steps to success. All right. As a new agent, we don't like to just tell you the IATA number when you say, hey, what's the IATA number? I need it. We're going to direct you where to find it because it's really important that you know where to find our resources instead of just being told them. Okay. I'm also not going to say it here because I'm recording this and we don't want to publicly give out Archer's IATA number. All right. Next step, you're going to confirm with the client that they want to make that booking. Because usually you're doing a quote first, right? Confirming with the client, we're going to make the booking. We do all the normal booking procedures. Please make sure you take note of the reservation confirmation number so that you can put it on your tracking form. Because you're really not going through a vendor and that hotel's going to pay Archer directly and they need to be able to connect it back to you. Right. So you need that reservation number. Remember, we talked earlier today in some trainings that on that commission tracking form, the reservation or confirmation number is the most important thing that needs to be accurate. Because that's the only way Archer can connect you to the bookings when those checks come in. Because it could be like 200 agents are on that check from Disney, right? <laughs> Whatever the case may be. All right, so that's the basic process for booking hotels directly, okay? Any questions before we move on about how to book the hotels directly or why we'd book a hotel directly? Nobody? Uh, what, what, what did you say that? Why we book it for the yeah. hotel? That, uh, why was that? I don't, I don't remember. So sometimes it could be that we're finding a significantly different price. I've also had experiences where um, maybe they offer a package for something booking directly through them that's not available on our vendors. So for example, some hotels might have a park and cruise hotel stay that they only offer by booking directly through them. Like they will give you included in your price parking at their hotel the whole week with a shuttle to the cruise port but you can't get okay. one of our vendors 
but they offer that package when you book direct with them. Okay. Your clients want a specific hotel and you just can't find it anywhere except booking directly. Got it. Thank you. You're welcome. So we're able to do that. We're not limited by what's just in our vendors. Okay. We get tons and tons and tons of questions about car rentals. Tons. Admittedly, our car rentals are not always the best pricing when packaged through our vendors. Sometimes they're really high priced when packaged through our vendors. Or there's less options or something like that. Or somebody just needs a flight and a car rental. I found the best way for car rentals is to book directly through the car rental company. Now, you're going to search the web for the rental car company name. Maybe it's Avis. Maybe it's Enterprise Travel Agent Portal. Typically, you're going to find a login with IATA link. All right. So we log in with Archer's IATA number. We confirm again with the client. Yep, this is the booking I want for my car. I will tell you that a lot of times car rentals are pay at pickup when you book directly through the car rental companies. Most of my clients pay at pickup at the airport, wherever they're getting their rental car. Also, it can, when you do it that way and it's pay at pickup, that's a way to help sometimes when they're like, oh, if I don't have to pay for everything all up front, that's helpful. You know, because there are people that are used to making a reservation for a hotel and paying at check-in. And a lot of our vendors aren't that way. So the rental car helps. Again, make note of the confirmation number, a reservation number, both for the commission tracking form, but also so that you can reconfirm it before they travel. Typically on those car rental sites, you're logging in with the Archer's IATA number. You don't have your own account. So it's not like you can go in and look at all your personal bookings. The only way to find it is with that confirmation number. All right, so let me just show you an example of what I mean. So I might look, you know, enterprise. So you can sell, I've, see I've done it before. Travel, agent portal. Now you're gonna get a few different things here. I always look for, hold on. I'm just gonna type IATA so I know that the correct one comes up. Might be this one might be the tri-brand. But see how this pops up? All you do is log in with the IATA number. I'm gonna pause sharing my screen for a second while I put it in, because I don't want it in the recording. And once I'm logged in, I will reopen the page. So all I did was put in the IATA number and now I can book. All right, Archer Travel Service. I'm not logged in as Tasha. I'm logged in as Archer Travel Service. And that's all you have to do to book. Maybe I need a rental car at Boston Logan Airport. Ooh, they even let me choose exotics. I don't need exotics. <laughs> I don't need that. All right, they're coming next weekend, the 9th. It does have let you choose the time of day. Like if they get in at 6 p.m. And then they're flying out, you know, on Monday. You can put like noon, whatever the time is. If they have a corporate account number, if they have a member club number, we can add all that so that they can still accrue their points. You could specifically choose, or you could just see what pops up. Now I've done this with Avis. There's some for Alamo. There's all different. For some reason, I do not know why. Enterprise doesn't show up in US dollars. Every time. So I just do a conversion, but usually it shows you that because they have to pay in that amount when they pick it up. But I'm like, why is it? Why is it not in U.S. dollars? I don't know why. 
but it's not. So let's say they wanted the this, I select it. It's actually super, super easy to do. No, Ashley, you were not wrong. It's always popped up that way for me. We can add protection things. These are actually included, included. There's options for things. And these are all things that you would not get on our other vendors, right? Extras. I'm not adding any extras when I do one. Then I put their name. You put the country. I don't know why it's having other countries. No, I want one. For some reason, Enterprise just doesn't select the United States as its default. And I don't know why. But I've booked through here and had no problems. Like, we put all the info. It has, you know, you put your email address. Let me scroll past that. Um, And then it will show. I just don't want to make a, an actual booking. View currency conversion. Because they'll have. Oh, it said it right there. Look. You will be charged $303.72 US. I don't know why it doesn't show it that way, but it doesn't. But we could also do, you know, it's because some people do have specific, specific um, rental car brands that they want to do. Uh, but Avis is the same way. I just might not click the right one. I've done Enterprise more than I've done Avis. That's not it. Um, login, Avis agent. But it asks for the IATA. You just log in with the IATA. You're, re you're, you're renting as Archer Travel. And then it connects it to it. Um, GDS is global... Something. <laughs> I don't know all, what they exactly mean. There are people that have um, access to this GDS booking system worldwide. It's we global distribution. You should, yeah. G global distribution system. Of course, I can't find the exact page right now as I look for this, but I know I've logged in there before. You could actually just search with like, I add a number. Because you're all watching me, I can't find it. Online reservations with I add a number, travel agency. Oh, it might have been the page I was on. Country of rental. Again, it's putting me in the UK. Which is just weird. United States, and then it asks for like the state you're going to do it in. And then you just fill everything out. And you can continue to search and you just use the IATA number and it goes through. Through Archer. All right. Is that pretty clear, like how we can do that? Any questions on how we do rentals that way? Oh, and it was clear. Especially if somebody's looking for just a rental car, it just makes more sense to go direct to the source. Yes. Sometimes you have biz you have travelers that, hey, I'm gonna take my company's buying my flights, I'm staying with family, or whatever the case is, right? And they don't need anything but a rental car, right? Hey, Tasha. Yes. Does the um, itemized on the car rental final page show the commission earnings? No. How do you find that out? Uh, oh, for you? I thought you meant for the client. You can see the commission. Oh, no. it, most of them have a, um, a section that says commission information, and it'll tell you what the percentage is. Okay. Like I know enterprise okay. is 10%. So it tells you the percentage. Does it tell you the exact dollar amount? Or do you have to do it yourself, figure it out? I don't remember. I feel like I might have had to do it myself. Okay. 
Um, Janine, I believe so. I believe that you can put in any of their numbers. In general, as a travel agent, you can't book using people's points and get commission, but you can put in their information so that they can earn points, if that makes sense. Now, with that being said, sometimes if I'm booking flights for somebody, I will absolutely use, I'm not going to get commission anyway for a flight unless I charge a fee. So if they're like, hey, can you find me the flights so I can use my miles? Yeah, but I'm probably still going to charge you a fee for doing the work and for servicing your flight, right? So let's talk about flights. It is sometimes best to book direct. Sometimes our vendors, what they're doing, the schedules aren't what we want or need because they're getting bulk tickets. Sometimes you see that on backs, bulk tickets. That's how they're lowering the prices sometimes, but that doesn't mean we can't find good pricing or better schedules. So sometimes it is best to book direct. I do not... I try not to book just flights for people. I have had people ask me and I'm like, hey, I'm more than happy like for friends help you find the best pricing, but it's probably just gonna be easier for you to book it yourself. I'll be honest, cause I'm gonna charge you a fee if I book it, especially if it's friends, you know? But like my sister today, she's like, why are flights to Ireland so expensive? I said, cause they're flights to Ireland. Like that's far and <laughs> it costs a lot of money. But I made sure I said to her, are you putting your, your web browser in private or incognito mode when you search for flights? Because you want to. Because they see you keep looking for that same flight, they sometimes raise the prices, right? My go-to, I search on Google Flights. I search for my flights on Google Flights. With that being said, Southwest and JetBlue pricing doesn't show up on Google Flights. You have to book, you have to look directly on their sites. Now, for me, those are the only two budget airlines I really book. Um, unless someone specifically says to me, book me Allegiant, book me Frontier, book me Spirit, those are not gonna be my choices. Because even though they do tend to save money, sometimes they end up getting nickeled and dimed for everything, including their having to pay for their carry-on, right? Then you're going to book direct with the airline. When you do Google Flights, it then brings you directly to the airline site. If you're going to book a flight, sometimes it's best just to go direct through them. You know you're going to get the best service, you know, you're going to get, you know, make sure everything's right. There's no miscommunication. The airline will talk to you if there's an issue, because if it's through a third party, I'm going to have to call Vax or Funjet on Vax. I'm not going to be able to talk to American Airlines, right? Part of the other reason. A reminder, there is no commission on airfare you do need to charge a fee. That's a It's a regulation by the FDA. I don't know why they don't allow us to get commission, but they don't. We do not get commission. So the only way you're going to get paid for booking a flight is by charging a fee. Now, some people might say, oh, well, it's not a big deal like they booked other stuff with me. Yes, but if you're going to service that flight, meaning checking them in, taking care of them if something goes wrong, you might want to charge because you're not getting compensated for that extra time. This is why sometimes I'm able to, you know, maybe we booked their flights direct, but we booked their hotel and transfers through VAX. And I'm just going to add the fee right there so that I don't have to have that. This person's a little stingy with money conversation of, hey, I'm charging you a fee or just be upfront about it. Hey, I don't get paid for flights. So I'm charging a fee. Some people, you know, they'll charge $25 per person per, per flight for a domestic flight or $50. Some people will say an international flight, it's going to be $100 per person. 
Some people charge a percentage of the total cost of the flights. It's your business. Anything that comes to charging fees, you get to choose what they are. But just a real quick, when we look at um, booking on Google flights, Notice I went immediately into incognito mode. I don't like to look for flights unless I'm in incognito mode. All right, let's see. Just for fun. Let's see what I can find for convention. Because I've been trying to look at flight prices for convention. Starts the 31st. Last year I was super tired. I'm going to come in early so I can do some stuff in the area and not be super tired and adjust to the time change. I'm going to fly home the last day because really there's stuff early in the morning, but I could fly that night. No, oh, that's not my check-in day. All right. And I search. Another great thing, though, about, about Google Flights, you can come in here and just type where they're coming from. If somebody's like, I don't know where I want to go, find me a deal. All right, May 5th to 14th, $223 from Boston to LA. Then I can plan a whole trip around cheap airfare. If they don't know where they want to go. They just want to go somewhere that's affordable. I know people who plan trips themselves that way, honestly. You know? So, you know, I look for what's the option. They do give what they consider the best departing flights. This JetBlue, even though it says no baggage, I can up, I can up that. So I can look and see what it is. Three hour and four minute layover in New York. No thanks. For an hour long flight. I don't think so. <laughs> I'll pay a hundred bucks more. <laughs> but 715, one stop. Now I can look at my flight home. I can fly overnight. I was planning to fly overnight. Now this is saying no baggage, but I can upgrade, right? These are actually not horrible. It may look like horrible prices, but it's not horrible prices. So I can upgrade and still get my carry on and I can pay for a check bag, right? That's what I talked about earlier in my other training, making sure you knew if they wanted baggage included in their price or not. See how it brought me right to JetBlue? Now I can book direct with JetBlue. It's going super slow right now, but I could book direct with JetBlue. It brought me directly to their website. It's showing me the details. JetBlue does show up on Google Flights. Southwest does not, for sure. But JetBlue, sometimes it says check website for price. That's why I put that on there. It doesn't always show the price. But it will always bring you. So if I go back to the search. Let's say I wanted to pay that extra. Uh, Boston, LA. Philosophy. Maybe I want to do this nonstop. Oh, that's actually not bad. 6.30 at night, get in at 9.30, leave at 9.50, get in at 6 a.m. Again. If I want my seat selection. Last to board. No, thanks. I want my seat selection is the bigger part. But again, brought me right to Delta. So you end up booking direct through the web, through them. Okay. You can also add, typically you can add their cancellation insurance right through the airline as well. But it's super easy and it's going to be the best if something goes wrong, booking direct through the airline. All right. 
So let's summarize all of what we went over. Hotels, all those bookings, or for the most part, bookings are made over the phone asking for the commissionable rate using Archer's IATA number. There are a few I've seen that's like a travel agent site that you can book through their site direct. I believe Marriott we can book right through Marriott site. Don't quote me on that, but there are some that there's a travel agent portal that you can book through. It's typically going to be easier to call though. Car rentals, find that travel agent portal for the rental cars, whatever company, log in with the IATA number. That's how we book. Flights, use Google Flights to search for the best rates, schedule and schedule. Then book direct through the airline. Remember, there's no commissions paid on flights. If you want to be paid and compensated for your time and work, you're going to want to charge a fee. Now, with that being said, there are some sites and we've had some trainings. Some people will book through things like Centrov. Some people will book the flights through Vax. Now, I will tell you this. I was recently told when trying to book multiple destination flights through an ALG company on VAX, they might not allow us to continue doing flight only unless there's at least one hotel night somewhere in the stay. To the point they were saying they no longer can, but there's the travel agents are still allowed to on the sites. And saying, I could do it for you but they might cancel it after it's booked. I was trying to do, a, so I'll say that again. I was trying to do a multiple destination flights through travel impressions. I was having the hardest times doing the flights. I did all the hotels through room res because it was going to be way better pricing for the client. And he said to me, he couldn't make the reservation because they're no longer allowing the agent's there, they're ALG agents. So that's Funjet, Apple, Travel Impressions, Blue Sky. I don't know if it applies to United and Southwest. To do flight only unless there's at least one night of a hotel. Because I know a lot of agents in the past have used VAX as a way to do flight only and add some basic insurance on the flight. Sometimes they let you, sometimes they don't and commissions. All right, so I I don't know if that's 100% accurate because I will tell you that um, I was told many different things by many different agents while I was trying to make that flight thing that I ended up not being able to make in the end. I had to do it a different way. But don't be surprised if that ability gets taken away. So this is a shorter training, but questions, questions about booking direct. Hopefully it was helpful. I'm going to stop recording. This was awesome. Yeah.